Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the NECA Godzilla 2014 24 inch head to tail action figure. This is one big Godzilla action figure and one of the first of its kind. Essentially a blown up version of the 6 inch tall NECA 2014 Godzilla. Many collectors wonder if this big lug is worth the price. So let's take a look and see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. In the looks department, it's very similar to the smaller 2014 Godzilla from NECA. There are a few differences, such as the clarity of some of the details, and the gills, or what have you, on the neck are much more defined. But unfortunately, aspects like the dorsal plates look gummy and cheap at this size. And to some, the blue wash on him may just be a little too overpowering. Here's a look at the head and neck with bigger eyes and more defined paint in the mouth as opposed to the smaller 2014 Godzilla. Again, with the smaller one, the eyes, they're a smidge too big and the pupils being placed dead center of the eye is an odd choice since you would always be looking off to the side. The mouth paint, however, I would say is pretty nicely done. It's nice and chaotic and the teeth are nice and crisp. Here's a good look at his chest where you can see the details are a bit better and the paint matches well too. And here's a look at his side where you can see they amped up the blue wash. In some pictures it may turn you off, but in hand it's not too overpowering under normal to low light conditions. But when you use bright light, like flash, it's very noticeable. A look at the thighs for those who need it, along with the feet, and the dorsal plates. This is honestly the worst part of the figure for me due to the fact there is some detailing there, but they look cheap like mush. It might not bother everyone, but it is very annoying to me. And last but not least, a look at the tail. It's very nicely done. Overall, this big lug looks pretty solid and probably won't disappoint most. As a big 2014 Godzilla, this guy hits the mark pretty well. When it comes to the articulation for this big guy, if you already have the smaller 6 inch tall neck of Godzilla 2014, you already know what to expect with just a few minor changes. However, for those of you who waited to get the big version and just passed the small version, I'll go through it really quick for you. So first off, you have the mouth, which is effectively on a hinge. It just opens and closes. Now, something I need to warn you about when you go to pick this guy up, if you see him in store or if you get him online, the jaw may come out. One of the sides may pop out of the hole that it's in. And if that happens, it's not defective, but what you have to do is you have to get a blow dryer. You have to heat the piss out of it to the point where it's almost like mush, and then you just have to jam it back in. I know this because <laughs> it happened to me, and it absolutely was not a fun experience. I practically had heat blisters on my thumb. So if that happens, you can fix it. Just, it's going to be a pain. So to continue from there, the head is attached to the neck on a ball joint, so you can get some pretty sweet movement there. You can twist it and turn it pretty much all the way around, like so, if you should so wish, though I don't know why you want to turn Godzilla's head completely around. And then the neck itself is attached here to the body of Godzilla on a ball joint too. And both of them are barbell style double axis, pretty much all of the ball joints on this Godzilla would be like that. So you have plenty of movement there. Unfortunately, though, he can't look up too, too far. Going down to the shoulders, they are, in fact, on ball joints, as you can see here, as I'm moving the arm just out a little bit. But unfortunately, they're very stiff. You can see that there. So when you first open them up, they may only act as swivels, but if you just work them a little bit, you'll eventually get the full ball joint motion out of them. The elbows for Godzilla are a swivel hinge combo, as you can see here, they move pretty nice. And then the wrists are ball joints, so you're going to be able to get the hands to move in basically any direction you would need them to move. Coming up next is the joint in the main body of Godzilla where the ab crunch would be, which is again on a barbell style or double axis ball joint, depending on what you would prefer to call it. And you get plenty of movement there. It's nice and free. Now, something else you need to be worried about is if you open your Godzilla up and he looks sort of off because the torso is sort of pushed off to one side or the other, with a little bit of force, you can just work 
one of the ball joints in your favor. As you can see, I'm slowly moving the torso in alignment and out of alignment. So if it's out of alignment, just push it back in. And if you need to, get a blow dryer and heat it up. And it'll move just fine for you. Godzilla's hip is on a ball joint. So twist it and move it. And there have been some people who have been complaining that the thigh is out of alignment with the rest of the body and even looks off from the other side. Again, it's on that barbell style ball joint. So all you'll have to do is just heat it up and use a little bit of muscle and you'll get it to line up perfectly. Next up would be the knees of Godzilla which feature that swivel hinge combo like you have for the elbows. And on this one, there's a lot more range. So if you can think of a pose that you would like to get out of the legs, chances are you're going to be able to get it. Wrapping up the leg articulation would be the ankles. And it's a ball joint, but on mine, it's a little bit restrictive. Maybe the joint still needs to be woken up a little bit, but I don't know. Something tells me there's not too much going on there. Finally, the main difference from the six inch tall Godzilla. You have the tail, which is not bendy wire. Thank God. All right, so here's how it works. They're all ball joints, and you have this section here, which is just one solid piece, and there's just, there's a ball joint attached at the base, but really, you don't get too much movement out of there. It's from where you attach the tail, right out of the box here, all the way down where you get the real movement, and all of the segments are ball jointed, as you can see, as Godzilla is toppling over. So, lots of movement there. You can pretty much get the tail in any position you would like, and really, the joint connection is very sturdy, so you don't really have to worry about drooping for too long. Now, to attach the tail, you're going to have to heat it up with some sort of heat source, whether it's hot tap water, not boiling water, or a blow dryer, which is the preferred method. And if you'd like to see how exactly to do that, I have a tutorial posted on my page, and just click on the link that's right down there, and it'll take you to it. So overall, in the articulation department, Godzilla has pretty much just the right joints. Again, it's pretty much a retread of the six inch tall Godzilla, but given the size, the price point, and the extra it comes with, it's not too bad. And again, something with this size, I really don't think you're going to be treating it like you would your typical action figure. Sadly, this guy doesn't come with your typical accessory like, say, a beam effect or swappable hands. Actually, he doesn't come with any accessories at all. Technically, he comes with a feature. If you look on the box, it says he features an authentic roar sound, and he does. On one of the dorsal plates right back here, this one here, all you do is you press it, and he roars. It does sound just a teeny bit muffled, but it really is nothing to complain about. The only complaint is, you have a few other dorsal plates here. Maybe they could have included different roars, like the humming charge that he has, which would have been awesome. It would have made this thing just so much better. But you know what? It's all right for what we get. Now, something you really need to be careful about is when you go to attach this tail, if you're not super careful and you just keep pushing and pushing and you ham hand it, you'll push the ball joint into this portion of the tail and you'll just break the sound box, the chip, whatever you want to call it, and you'll basically disable the roar feature. So be very, very careful when putting the tail on and make sure you heat it properly enough. Well, that's pretty much all for the accessories for this guy. And I do have to say, it's just fun as hell to walk by your Godzilla and just press it. So, one more time for the road. When it comes to scaling, this guy pretty much fits in with nothing in the 6-inch, 7-inch scale. Whether it's from Bandai or even from NECA. However, if you have a few X Plus figures, which I don't, he may be able to sneak into a display or two. For a general size comparison though, there's the 6 inch 2014 NECA Godzilla in between the big one's legs and Series 1 Gypsy Danger on the right with the Battle Damage Knife Head from Series 3 on the left in the Pacific Rim line. So you pretty much got an idea, this guy is a big, big figure. However though, due to a strict scaling technicality, the 6 inch Ultraman stuff that's out there, whether it's the Vinyls or the Ultra Act line, some of those characters would scale well with this Godzilla because the average Ultraman is somewhere between 40 to 50 meters, and at the 6 inch mark it would pretty much be spot on for this big Godzilla. However, aside from that, if you really want to display this guy, 
find a centerpiece spot for him because that would be just perfect. So, buy him now, skip him, or wait for a deal. Basically, looks-wise, he's very similar to the 6-inch counterpart, but with more defined features and better paint for the head. The dorsal plates look like crap, to be honest, and the blue wash may look a bit too much for some. However, as a tower ring centerpiece, he looks pretty great. Articulation is pretty solid, again like the 6-inch, but it's a bit stiffer in some spots while more forgiving in others. Just be careful not to abuse it so the joints stay nice and tight. Accessories? None, but the sound feature is pretty sweet. I've heard stories of it going off on its own, especially in the middle of the night, which definitely sounds creepy. Overall, he's not super amazing ZOMG best goji ever, but as a nice, big novelty toy, he fits in just well enough. I must say though, I got mine for really cheap, and I suggest you try to do the same. Full MSRP is a bit much to me, so the cheaper you can get him, the better. I recommend him, but not for too much.